This is going to be our main passage today, but God makes it pretty clear there's two choices. Maybe it feels like there's a lot more choices in our lives, but there's really, there's a narrow path and there's a broad path. And which one are you on is really our question for today. And I'm sure you've heard this, this before. It's in the Sermon on the Mount. This year in chapel at Tabor College, our theme is transformation. And we're using the Sermon on the Mount uh, as, as our passage. And so I use this in our first opening chapel. And I love this thinking about what is the path that we're on. And so let me just share a little bit about the path that God's had me on. And my wife, and I should introduce my wife. Karen is here with me. You want to stand, Karen, real quick? Yep, Karen, yep, absolutely. The better half, of course. And, and she volunteers full-time, traveling with me and serving on campus. I, she eats about three lunches a day. Um, because she just goes from student group to student group to student group, and she's very intentional in discipleship relationships with our young ladies in particular at Tabor College. She knows almost everybody's name. Uh, yeah, I know. It's over 500 students, and, and uh, so it's a lot of names, but it's just a joy to have her with me. And we've been on this journey together um, for, for a long time. Uh, we have four children, Two of them came to us through birth, and two of them later in life uh, through adoption. We lived in California for a number of years. Uh, our oldest son, a couple of you have met, he is a pastor over at Mountain Lake, Minnesota. Uh, his name is Alex Jansen, tall redhead. He is the best of both of us, I would say. Um, if you've ever met Alex, he is full of energy, and the Holy Spirit is, is rich in his life, and, and has lots of energy. He, um, he is a half, he's a bivocational pastor, half-time as senior pastor in a small church, and half-time teaching math in a local school there, and he loves living in both worlds. He finds that to be really an effective thing to be able to be in the high school and meeting, meeting young people. Um, we have our, our second son who's born to us, lives in Santa Barbara, California. It's not a bad place to live. Um, he is a high school physics teacher and was married recently. And our two daughters, one came to us when she was 11 through foster care, and we adopted her. And uh, it's this crazy thing. We had felt God convicting us maybe not convicting is the right word, but pressing on us this need for families to adopt. And when we heard of the tens and tens of thousands of, student, of, of young people in California at the time where we were living in the foster care system, um, and that the hardest one to adopt were older kids and sibling groups, we just felt God saying, you need to do that. And, and so we signed up and God gave us uh, a young lady who was older than we expected and was a part of a sibling group, but all of the others had been adopted out. And we were like, wait a minute, we thought, God, you had put on our heart to adopt a sibling group. And sure enough, uh, what, three, four years later, three years later, her sister came to us through adoption, uh, who she had been adopted in a home, got removed from that homing uh, because of some issues and uh, wound up in, in our home. Um, and so that's a part of, of our life, and I'll come back to that in, in just a, a little bit. Um, I went to Tabor College, met my wife there. Um, this was a long time ago. I have not been at Tabor all that time in between. So in 1990, I graduated, and I've met two Tabor alumni if you attended Tabor for at least a semester, raise your hand. I know we've got a couple. We've got several here. All right, great. A number of you here. And I know that Tabor has had a connection here, and Tabor people have had a connection here. In fact, our current board chair is Susan Franz Kozlowski. Um, Susan's parents, Harold and Eleanor, moved... 40 years ago, I think, from Mountain Lake, Minnesota to here to be a part of the families that were planting this church, if I have that timing correct. And, and, uh, and so that's, and they were close, they, Harold had been on the board at Tabor for many years, and so that's a close Tabor connection. And so there's a, a cool connection with this church even. And I have to believe that I think I was in this church, not this building here, but probably the other one. In 1990, when I graduated Tabor, I went for six months on something called Harvest Crew, but not 
uh, harvesting wheat, we were a music and drama group from Tabor. And it, for me, it was a way of giving back to the college after I'd graduated. And uh, mostly I was running sound, but I did some skits and sang and played drums. And we went all over the country, and I am pretty sure we were in this church. So that was probably the last time I was here. But God has had us on this journey of uh, going off to grad school in computer science. I, I did a master's in AI in the 1990s. The 1990s, okay, we're, here, we're finally now hearing about AI in the general public, but back in the, that day, it was just a couple of us, it felt like, that knew about artificial intelligence, and, and we were doing some really fun work, and my first job was at Sprint, the phone company, they're now T-Mobile, but doing expert systems and artificial intelligence work, catching criminals, uh, doing fraud detection, and in that season, we are doing really well, um, we had our first child, and it was kind of the first moment of God saying, are you going to follow what you want to do? Or are you going to follow what I want you to do? Amen. And there was this moment where we got a phone call from a college saying, hey, weren't you going to go get a PhD and teach? What are you doing making all that money in industry? <laughs> um, we need a computer science professor. And right away, our first reaction was, no, we're doing really well. Uh, why would we do that? But my wife and I said, we're going to pray about it and at least see if God is in this. And that was the first time of saying, God, what do you want us to do rather than just what do I want to do? And through that, that process of discernment, we went and we taught in a Christian college for seven years. And, and we had great ministry. We loved it. Cut our salary in half, more than in half. Um, but God provided. I started doing consulting, and before, within a year, I was making as much money um, doing that as I was uh, in, in industry, and that was just this fun little surprise that, that God gave for us. And then several years later, I came up for a sabbatical, and what am I going to do? And we felt God nudging us to go finish that PhD, and, and then an opportunity to go and teach software engineering at Cal Poly, at a big public university. We felt a nudge saying God wanted us to be a light in a dark place. And, and uh, we took the opportunity there, first class of every semester of saying, I know you have faculty that believe all sorts of things and they have all sorts of different agendas, but I want you to know that you have a professor who loves Jesus and that's one of the most important things you need to know about me. In addition to my pedigree, my background, my credentials as a computer scientist, but, but I love Jesus and I would, I would yeah. briefly share the gospel and open up the opportunity to come and talk about that. But being a public university, that's kind of all I could do. Um, and we saw good fruit during that time, especially in the beginning. But after 15 years, it became harder and harder in the public university to do even that. At one point, the university derecognized all of the Christian groups on campus. My wife and I were involved with one group in particular, Asian American Christian Fellowship, because we're so Asian. Uh, well, we're not that, but we are American and we are Christians, and, and we just loved this group of, of young Asian American students, and that became our family in many ways. But even that, we got kicked off campus, and there were all these restrictions, and, and, um, and it was just challenging. And it was along that time, after 15 years there, that we were uh, considering going back to Christian higher education. Westmont College in Santa Barbara was asking us to come and do some teaching there, and would we consider coming and, and teach full-time? And my wife was also directing a choir there at Westmont for a semester. This is in COVID. So can, you, can you imagine directing a choir outside with masks on, separated by 15 feet? It was, it was crazy, but she did it. And fortunately, it was in California where you could be outside all winter. Um, you couldn't do that here. Um, but in that season, we got a call out of the blue from, from Susan Franz Kozlowski, the chair of the, of the board of directors at Tabor, saying, hey, would you consider, your name has come up, would you consider applying to be president of Tabor College? Are you available and are you interested? And I right away said, well, I'm actually available. I had just announced I was going to take an early retirement from Cal Poly. They were kind of panicking in COVID and offering these early retirement things. But I said, I'm not interested. That sounds like a lot of work. I'm trying to slow down, and that does not sound like slowing down. But again, that question of not what do I want to do, but God, what do you want me Amen. to do? 
And so we said, we'll pray about it. And again, through much prayer and discernment, we felt God saying, you should at least apply and see where that goes. Thinking there's no way they're going to hire a computer scientist as the professor of a small Christian college in Kansas. Um, but, um, but, but that's a part of our story and, uh, and what happened. And so uh, this picture is one from Morro Bay. This is where we lived in California, um, right across the Estero Bay there. And we loved living there at the beach, had a great Fam, uh, church family that we were a part of and, and enjoyed uh, that very much. But um, there's great beauty in Kansas as well. And I took this picture just this summer as we were on our way uh, to our daughter's um, wedding. Um, and on the day that we were moving from California to Kansas, July 4th, 2021, so a little over three years ago, we had packed all our belongings in a Penske truck, the biggest one we could find, and we were about two, two and a half hours into the drive in Bakersfield, California. My wife and our son Alex was moving with us. He was coming to the job at Mountain Lake at the same time as we were coming to Kansas, and I got a call in Bakersfield, and it was this guy who I'd met once before, and, and he um, was a friend of our daughter, our youngest daughter, who we'd adopted when she was 15, and she was working in Tucson, Arizona as a correctional officer. Um, and he said, I know you're moving today. There's been a terrible accident and you need to redirect and you need to come to Tucson. Your daughter broke her neck in a pool accident. They say she'll never walk again and she may not even survive surgery. She's already in surgery. That rocked my world. It's like I, I hung up and I just, for the next 45 minutes, started yelling at God. Like, how do you think I can handle this? I go right away to myself. Rather than praying for my daughter, I'm thinking about how this affects me. I mean, that's incredibly shameful for me to say that. But that was my immediate reaction, is how does this affect me? How can I enter into this crazy new job as president of a college and moving across the country and take care of my daughter. She's going to have to move in with us. We're going to be feeding her the rest of her life. Uh, how, how can we do this? But within about 45 minutes, God changed my heart. And a peace came over me. You know, there's that verse of the peace that surpasses understanding. You can't, I can't explain it, but just a peace came over me saying, God, I felt like God was just telling me, if I've called you to this, I'm going to carry you through this, right and you're going to be okay. Right on. I agree. And so we drove down to Tucson with all our belongings there in the parking lot of the, of the hospital, and we saw our daughter the next day. She survived surgery, and she could kind of move her arms a little bit. That was a big thing. Her fingers just a tiny bit. And while we were there, her, her big toe just a tiny, tiny bit. There was a glimmer of hope that there might be um, some movement. Long story short, this young lady, the last thing she wanted to do was move in with her parents in Kansas in a house she'd never been to, a place she didn't want to be uh, living with us, but she had no other choice. And so we brought her in a wheelchair. And even though we didn't get to see her learn to walk the first time, because we adopted her at age 15, we got to see her learn to walk the second time. And one of the crazy things, but I think this is a big part of the story, is that Karen would come. So we were trying to start this job. I was figuring out how to be president. It was just a chaotic time in our life. And Karen was trying to set up a house. And I'm sorry, I'm making my wife cry this morning. <laughs> and like I said, this wasn't the planned sermon for today. But I, I just uh, sensed, uh, and we may get there yet. Uh, but I just sensed that God uh, wanted me to share some of these God stories. Um, how he's worked in our life. And so it was incredibly difficult for Karen. And she would say to our daughter, um, I'm going to go on campus to chapel. Would you like to go? And our daughter was so desperate to get out. She was not walking with the Lord. But she said, yeah, anything. Get me out of the house. And so she would go on campus to Tabor College to our chapel that we have twice a week. And God used that time to start penetrating her heart. 
in an amazing way. And the people of Tabor, and not just the students and the faculty staff, but the community members that would come in. It was great, these communities. She started walking with a walker, and they would come, oh, I like your walker. Mine has this. And, you know, and they would compare, like, oh, who's your physical therapist? Oh, yeah, what med medicines are you on? So some of the older people in, in the community, they were just loving on her. And when all of this happened, word went out on, you know, the day we were moving to Kansas, word went out through the Tabor community, pray for the new president and his daughter, and, and she felt that. She said, I don't know how you can feel that, but I felt thousands of people who don't know me praying for me. Amen. And so God has used that to transform her life, and she's now walking with the Lord. And this summer, I got to walk her down the aisle, and she got married to a young man she met at Tabor College. She's now a Tabor student. She told us, yeah, so that was kind of crazy. She hadn't done college, and, and she said by Thanksgiving that year, she said, I'm thinking about uh, enrolling in Tabor, and we're like, it's a Christian college, you know. She's like, I know, I know, but I think I need to be surrounded by these people, Amen. and that's been a part of her story and our story and, and the Tabor story in recent years, and, and so... Praise God for what he has been doing through that. My most recent thing, and I'll finish with this on my personal stuff, is, and the reason I'm sitting is um, in spring of this year, I was diagnosed with prostate cancer. That was a, not a total surprise, but I didn't expect it now. My father had died of prostate cancer just four years ago. And so I thought, I've got 20 years yet before it'll hit me. And so... Uh, I wasn't quite ready for that coming now. Uh, and so there was, again, a moment this summer of, God, is our time at Tabor done already? Is that it? Well, did you just bring us here for our daughter, Amber? You know, or, or what all was it? Um, or do you have another 10, 15 years for us here? What does it look like? And there was just that uncertain time. And we decided to go ahead and have surgery, which was two months ago. And a week and a half ago, almost two weeks ago, my surgeon told me, he said, as far as I'm concerned, you are cured of cancer. Praise God, Praise God for that. And so... Um, uh, what a blessing that is. And so I'm still in a recovery mode, but, and, and I'm, this is kind of my first trip out um, from campus, but praise God for what he's been doing.